Dear viewers, welcome once again to another riveting edition of Practical Business Tips by Enterprise Uganda, Minister of Finance and Uganda Insurance Association. I'm your host, Charles Boji, and in the studio today we have very, very special guests. But before I go there, I want to touch the topic for the day, very critical topic, and I know it has come so many times in our discussions here where people are asking for ways they can mitigate risk when doing business. And today in the house, we have the experts in the area, and we have testimony from one of the beneficiaries of insurance. And that brings me to the topic of the day, which is um, um, the role or the benefits of insurance to business operators. And we are tagging it to the theme or the tagline that you saw in the advert, which is the role of insurance in building sustainable business. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our business coach, as usual, Charles. So glad to be here this evening. And as usual, I'm happy to be here to have a, a chat and a conversation with all of you on a very valid topic of insurance. Very good. Mm -hmm. Again, from the industry, I have to underline the word the industry, the insurance <coughs> industry for that matter. We have uh, Paul. Paul, you can... Good evening, viewers. I'm glad to be here. And the beauty about this sort of setting is that uh, it won't generate a lot of debate. <laughs> Since you called me the expert, <laughs> I might as well prevail all over you. But I'm very glad to be here. That's a good uh, thing. And we are ready to uh, listen. And it's learn. a very sensitive <laughs> topic. It's very valid. And uh, mm. I will try and give it my best. Very good. That's Paul Kavuma. Paul Kavuma is the executive director of Uganda Insurance Association. So, yeah, when he says what he says, he's the man. Um, we have Robin as well. Robina, you're most welcome to the show. Good afternoon, viewers. So honored to be here. Um, one of the beneficiaries of insurance, mm -hmm. as in Gaza High School. Very good. So mm -hmm. I'm honored to be here to give testimony of the same. Very good. That is Kizito Robin Akatongole. She's the headmistress of Gaza High School, a beneficiary, like she said, of insurance. This program is anchored on practical business tips as the word goes, or as our tagline goes. And um, that's why we have Robina here, because she experienced insurance, and she's here to share her experience, and how that then uh, trickled down to supporting her operations as uh, the headmistress of Gaza High School. Charles, mm. very interesting week has been uh, yeah. this yeah. one we are concluding today. Yeah, it's a week where some people have had their careers dashed, and some people are saying, no matter how narrow the, the door became, mm. I'll find a window and get into the game again. <laughs> it was that week for nominations. Yeah. But you yes. could see the tension, mm. the pressure, mm. the chaos, mm -hmm. the blood, the tears. It was tough. I hear you. But it speaks a lot about how <laughs> it's getting narrower and narrower to build a career in this country. And we need to look at some of these things and pick a leaf beyond just talking about positions in, 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 in parliament. And begin to ask ourselves that how many people are dying to go and deliver a solid solution either through chicken in all of northern Uganda? Mm -hmm. How many are dying to go that route? Yeah. How many people are dying to resolve the problem of bad seeds in a particular location in this country? Mm -hmm. That route is an open route, and you don't need to be nominated. You nominate yourself. But this other route where salary is guaranteed every 30 days is capturing the attention of everyone. Mm -hmm. And the pain and the pressure in families, in communities, even when you are not standing, the pressure those candidates will pour on you is unbelievable. You can't escape them. If you're relative as well. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it has been a very, very hot temperature week in terms of uh, politics. I hear you. Now talk about actually offering solutions that help a person down there mm -hmm. or going down to offer something that would change society. We had a very interesting story that, that week. Yeah. Noella's story. Yes. In fact, without <coughs> mentioning it, I categorized her as a social entrepreneur because of the yeah. impact she has created down there. Very true. And I'm sure for those that missed the show, um, it would be nice if we gave them a digest yeah. of what Noella's uh, story was. And the stories like those that we should be talking about, spreading across the country, mm. to just make Uganda that the space for you to make a career, make a difference, create an impact, that space is big. 
So as I get into the story of Noella, I want to first summarize a few, th a few things that were really related to that, what I call the highlights. Mm -hmm. Highlight number one was that entrepreneurship knows no barriers. If your finances are low, entrepreneurship will welcome you. Yeah. Whatever your gender you are wanted, yeah. whatever your education, whatever your location, mm -hmm. this is one platform through which everybody is having has a chance mm. to make a contribution mm. in this planet. Mm. As you later see, a lady who was an information scientist became an expert in uh, multiplying seed and <coughs> spreading this across a whole bigger region in northern Uganda. Mm. Highlight number two is that the start of entrepreneurship shall always receive limited support almost always, mm. even from your very own. And why is this the case? It is the case because the start is always rugged, unpalatable, not worth it celebrating and clapping for. So people will be saying, you have a degree and you're into this kind of a miserable thing, which even people with no degrees are engaged in, and they are doing better than you because they went there ahead of you. So they are saying, your options are many. Why are you suffering with this route of entrepreneurship? So I bring these highlights for people to know that as you pick this route that opens or breaks all barriers, the start will always be challenged. Number three highlight is that the biggest investment you can make mm -hmm. to stay the course in business is to invest in yourself, the entrepreneur. All the other resources invariably will follow. The story of Ojara brought that. The stories of all the others have always painted that picture. Yeah. But you know, in the beginning, and as you continue with the game of entrepreneurship, be ready to invest in that one particular area, investing in the entrepreneur. So specifically, the lessons from the Ojara uh, episode would be running as follows. One. You need to connect with the higher purpose of your business to scale over startup and continuity challenges. Higher purpose. This Noella lady said, how do I connect with the villagers who are aching a living in a way which is not palatable? And they are the majority. Mm. I had the privilege of growing up in an urban setting. The privilege of daddy and mommy looking after me very well. I need to break away from that and go to something very, very basic, but extremely fundamental for the majority of people. Noella was an information scientist venturing into agriculture, had never grown in a farming family. She had never seen a cassava plant, never seen a potato plant, went and started multiplying those seeds for those crops. You can only do that when deep inside you, you connect with that kind of a mission. She had never lived in a rural community in her childhood. She decided to go and live and work with villagers. Family post opposed to the idea. Only her mom was a strong anchor to that kind of a game that she had chosen. So you need something that you go to sleep on and you say, but much, much as I got a day that was tough, what I'm about to do, what I'm pursuing, is going to change people's lives. Yeah. The other thing we learned from Noella is that social <coughs> enterprise calls for strong networking skills and ability to serve two customers. Noella had to lobby for learn from community leadership, even when they knew that what she was doing was good. They wouldn't just say, please, we love what you are doing here is learn. You have to knock the doors. You have to keep asking. You have to keep seeking. Almost bringing in Matthew chapter 7, verse yeah. 7. You know? Yeah. Seek, knock, <laughs> yeah. ask, and all those must be part of your game if you are into social enterprise. Noella had to establish mutual business linkages with organizations like NARO. Mutual, because NARO will not just associate with you if they don't see how you can further their own course. You have to be relevant for NARO to welcome you. 
World Vision, Goal, Action Aid, all this work, the kind of stakeholders, this lady had to start saying, I need to knock their doors because they are dealing with the kind of people I'm also interested in. She had to fulfill demanding conditions for public job opportunities. Lesson number three is that um, an entrepreneur must be ready to pay the price of investing in one's technical and business management skills, both. I like the fact that she actually had to go back to school. Exactly. And do a master's. In agribusiness. In agribusiness and entrepreneurship yes. and management. And yet her background was library science. Library science. You, know, you, you could commitment. see. Yeah. She said, I, each time I go and talk with these scientists, they tend to speak a language that makes me look foolish. Mm -hmm. Is there this something I can also learn? Mm -hmm. She signed up for the thing at a higher level and added entrepreneurship to it and added management to it. And she came back for them and said, now we're equal. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. You know? But after getting that, she also continued to again attend more technical short courses as well as attending relevant business management skills. She picked from Enterprise Uganda and elsewhere. Her key principles, which I want to summarize with, were as follows. Number one, compliance with the regulators and try to produce audited books will always put you in good standing, especially when you're handling social enterprise uh, direction of your business. Because this gives you comp uh, credibility. Mm -hmm. Principle number two, seek the ownership of solutions by the community that you serve for the benefits to embed and seep through. Because if you just keep on going there because a donor has given you resources, the community will be the one to speak mm -hmm. whether they indeed got value from you or they <laughs> didn't. Yeah. Principle number three is that limit your areas of focus and be consistent and thoroughly informed on them. Mm -hmm. She said, I will concentrate on tubers but I will make sure that I will speak the language of tubers, sometimes better than researchers mm -hmm. of tubers. Mm -hmm. Because for her, she does that, plus bringing the business, business angle of getting the tubers to go to the gardens of the ordinary uh, farmer. Mm -hmm. Principle number three, which was very interesting. Competition brings growth. It will keep you on your toes and could even be your market. These are the kind of things you Ugandans need to know. Instead of becoming jealousy of a rising competitor, learn from the competitor. <coughs> Appreciate that if the competitor disappears tomorrow, you begin to let guard. Japan is where it is today in terms of manufacturing, in terms of car assembly lines, because of the fierce competition they created within their own borders. I remember commenting when I listened to Noel, I said, the man who created Walmart said, the day I become the only player in any particular location, I will create competition. Because it gives you that kind of energy to keep mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. Then the final uh, principle is that um, she is always a believer in organic foods. And she said there is great opportunity for Uganda along this direction. And she stated some very, very interesting figure. She said this is a market for 80 billion euro. Yeah. Yeah. And as a country, we have a lot more opportunity to tap into this. But focus, concentration, attention is important for us to get the best out of this. Very so good pointers, Charles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to add anything to that. And I'm sure yeah. viewers who missed mm -hmm. the show, that was a good digest, and uh, I'm quite convinced that you picked a thing or two from that. Paul, we're glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank um, you very good. Um, once again, now, I know as the association, you've done quite a lot in, um, you know, educating the public about insurance. Um, I want to tie this together to look at why should a Ugandan care? You know, in the media, we always say, we ask the so what question. Yes. <laughs> Why should I spend yeah, sleepless yeah. nights because I'm not insured? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's, that's a very good question, Charles, and uh, I guess it sets the stage for us for this discussion. Um, first of all, maybe to, to, to again create a bit of awareness to the viewers, uh, the Uganda Insurers Association is a trade association mm. that composes of uh, 
all registered insurers in the country. Yeah. And we have 21 uh, non-life, nine life, and uh, two micro-insurers now. We have micro-insurance in the market and four reinsurers. Uh, out of the four reinsurers, we have one who's uh, domiciled in Uganda and uh, uh, um, uh, we call it the national carrier, Uganda Re. Okay. But because of the attraction, we have uh, uh, government uh, protocol agreements that have been signed in the Comesa region. That's why we have ZEPRI and uh, Africa Re. And lately, Kenya Re, as our partners next door, have also expressed interest okay. and registered a local company in Uganda called mm -hmm. Kenya Re. Mm -hmm. Now, our mandate as the Uganda Insurance Association really is to offer the public yeah. with, the, with information regarding insurance. And uh, the question that you pose actually lends credence to that as well, mm -hmm. most importantly, because if, if I wasn't in insurance, uh, I think I would imagine going to bed without insurance would be catastrophic, <laughs> knowing that, I've, knowing that I, I've seen risk. Yeah. Maybe I'm talking from a very biased point of view. Mm -hmm. Because I, I see, I, I've seen risk happening for the last 22 years mm -hmm. of my career in insurance. Really? So I know what risk is about. So, so um, we, we, our mandate, like I said, is to you know, offer public with information insurance. Mm -hmm. We've partnered with uh, stakeholders like Enterprise Uganda, thank you Charles, to give us the opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to, to speak to him and his members. Okay. Now, a, part, a platform like Enterprise Uganda constitutes of a varied multitude of membership mm. where th that is a catchment area for us as insurers mm. for, for us to speak to them you know uh, let them know what 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 we are about and and how we can go about risk mitigation mm. um the the topic as it is you know to sustain insure i mean to sustain the business to sustain a business or or, or, or its survival yeah. lends credence to this sort of thing and uh, our key objective is to actually let the public know that insurance can be a means of risk transfer. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're dealing with a business, there are certain things that you are core to you. If I'm a trader in, say, telecom, mm -hmm. I am best placed to sell my phones, you know, to the public. Yeah. And I would not know how to manage my risk in terms of exposure. So I'd rather transfer that to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And insurance is best placed to do that for you. Mm. So they will do it for you. They'll give you a plan. They'll give you risk mitigation measures. They, they, they will take you through the drill, you know, for you to appreciate. What, 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 what would happen then, what, what used to happen then is there was the perception about the fine print. You know, insurance policies were always written in font 8. But <laughs> our researchers <laughs> informed. And bent a bit. Yes, our researchers in informed yes. that we also need regulation yeah. that is enabling for the public to appreciate what mm -hmm. insurance is about. Mm -hmm. and, and I can commend our regulator, he's the custodian of the Insurance Act, and it has regulation to support it. And one particular one is, uh, is called market conduct, yeah. whereby as a player, as an insurer, it's incumbent on me to actually disclose to my client the scope of cover offered, mm -hmm. what I intend to cover, and in the event of a claim, this is the drill we're going to go through, so that at least mm. that client knows. Thank you, Paul. So, so when we run through all this, mm. then it informs research. I hear you. You know, it informs research, yeah. I mm. hear you. Mm. And, and I think on that note, um, mm. uh, probably one of the reasons why Robina is here mm. is we're going to look at uh, one of the perceptions that the public has or used to have that mm. insurance doesn't pay. Mm. Uh, probably we'll see that unpacked. Mm. Yeah. Um, viewers, you can be part of this discussion. I know some of these questions have been coming through in our previous uh, interfaces. So um, issues to do to manage risk, issues to do with, you know, there's been too much focus on I have so much money, what business can I do? Yes. But then after establishing that business, what happens? Mm. If fire comes, mm. God forbid, floods and that kind of thing, we are now dealing with COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, Paul will educate us about that mm. as well. Mm. But yeah, um, you can be part of the discussion. We have a WhatsApp number running on screen, uh, but then also, at the end of the show, towards the end, we'll be opening calls. We'll be opening our lines, and we'd like to hear from you. Paul, yes. there's a perception, especially among SMEs, mm -hmm. that insurance is for the rich. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Charles and I tend to address ourselves more On the to the small and medium mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Because, I mean, truth be told, these are the guys that are driving this economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say to such perception? Mm -hmm. I was, um, again, when, when we had this discussion with Charles and uh, the focus was on SMEs, mm. uh, I did a bit of research 
in terms yeah. of a definition of what an SME in Uganda. Um, it is categorized with employees, is it more than between between five and 49? Mm. Yes, can be classified exactly. as an SME. Yeah. Mm. Um, if, if you have more than five mm. employees, then you're also mandatorily required to subscribe to NSSF. Mm. So I if you have the, the, the mantle to do that, then you might as well embrace insurance. Now, to get to your question, um, info, I, um, research has, uh, I mean, as, as, as the association, mm. we, we've done research and it has informed our penetration into the SMEs. And uh, there's no better way to do it like um, developing agriculture. You know, mm. uh, at the time when government, I mean, agriculture, we all know, is the backbone of of, of the economy. We've studied that for, for the last 20 years. Mm. We know it. It employs 80% of our population, biggest contributor to GDP, yep. ETC. Mm. Now, agriculture as a sector has facets of, of, of um, processes within, wi within each. I mean, mm. the production, mm. the, the, the processing, agro-processing, ETC. Mm. And that all, at to an extent, can fall under the category of uh, SMEs. Mm. Now, what the insurers have done we have a sectoral sort of approach. We, we first of all speak about our own, the stakeholders internally in the sector, and that constitutes the players. Of course, they are regulator championing us, and our various distribution channels like the brokers and the agents, and of course our training wing, the ITC. Mm -hmm. Now, to, to, to bring all this into perspective, um, research informed that actually agriculture needs to be developed. Mm -hmm. And by the time government was looking for uh, sustenance of agriculture <coughs> and developing it, insurance is actually one of those uh, subjects that came up mm. and uh, government has put up a subsidy for premium for premium mm. to agriculture because man, um, in the ideal world agriculture insurance is very expensive it's probably have probably has the highest rate of about 10 percent mm. which could be very high but government now has a fund mm -hmm. that it has extended to the sector to subsidize on agriculture mm -hmm. now we are seeing quite a bit of a good response where we started with 100,000 farmers, we now have probably close to half a million farmers on our books. Mm. And the KPIs were for the uh, farmers to access financing. Mm. So you cannot access finance if you don't have security. You won't go to a microfinance if you're not knowledgeable about insurance. So you'll present yourself that way. And, and it's not a question of getting your, your, your property to secure the loan, but we actually go for the yield. Mm. You know, if you have a yield of, say, five acres of beans, two acres of... I mean, I I even then it ranges into thresholds. We are not discriminatory. Mm. But even the smallest of an agricultural producer, once they aggregate themselves into a group, we do address them. I hear so you. I can see that we have a very good score on the SMEs using the agricultural route as insurance. Mm. Then we want to go to the trade and commerce. Mm. You know, our Chikubo trader... Mm. Our trader in Gomba, you know, the rural, the rural like area the trader. Mm. Yeah. We also want to try and educate them. The beauty about insurance is that we have those policies that touch the livelihood of you. Because mm. SMEs are sole proprietors, proprietorships mm -hmm. more often. Mm -hmm. It's hardly that you'll see a partnership. So if we can convince that sole proprietor to, to actually appreciate what a life policy does... Yeah you know, a sum assured of 20 million and you're paying 55, 50,000 every month and you are assured that even mid-term in the event of a demise, the beneficiaries will actually get the benefit. Mm. It, it, it is we've, we've, we've tended to see a bit of an appreciation, you know. Uh, I even when they access credit, you know, we, we give them policies that can actually help them access credit. Mm. So we are seeing a, a upward trajectory in SMEs appreciating mm. Uh, on the general risk, uh, we're also trying to innovate and say a uh, one-size-fits-all. If my shop in Chikubo is valued at 100 million, I want to have a multitude of risks mm. with one premium mm. so that we have different sections of your policy, attach a premium to it, and then you have one premium. I think that's a good one, you know, Paul. Which, which then mm. manages your, your program management, management of insurance. That's a good one. You I love it. Um, mm. Just I remember a time when... Um, mm. yeah. When I was growing up, and uh, you'd have uh, a list of insurance products, mm -hmm. yeah. you'd say marine, and then yes. as a kid, I would figure, I would try to figure out, I was like, marine, <laughs> what's, what's marine? Yeah. what yes. is that? Yes. Mm. Then this air, what, yes. what? Yes. I mean, uh, the issue yeah. has been, and it's good you're now responding as an industry, yeah. tailoring products that meet mm. the Different need of, uh, for instance, yeah. our man, the fish farmer in mm. Gulu, yeah. mm. grace, yeah. 
Your yeah. man from Tungam of the bakery. Very mm -hmm. true. Again, talking about that, Charles, what do you think such a person can pick from Paul's sub submission? And I'm so glad that um, this Sunday uh, platform we're putting to the country is bring stakeholders like now Uganda Insurance Association. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can see what has been a big issue here is information. Yeah. Insurance has been put in a category that when the mobile phone was coming to this country, it was exclusive club of the elite. Yeah. Even that conversation was, <laughs> you could never get anybody get nearer there. Mm -hmm. Until MTN came in and said, this is about information. And the way the advert came in and said, we're going to give you an advert where a shoe shiner is busy shining his mm. shoes and suddenly he receives a phone call and post, you mean even a, a shoe shiner could get uh, a, a cell phone mm. now insurance needs to be brought down from that kind of uh, elitist perspective yeah. something expensive something too ideal something not for the poor world to now something we should begin to see as a utility your mm. everyday exactly. requirement. And it matters for us to have this education because of the following. Mm. Number one, when you look at a typical SME, every day he's having working capital shortages. Mm. Capital for expansion shortages. Mm. And they imagine that by them cutting off insurance, they are trying to sort out those kind of issues. Mm. He struggles to fill up his shop, his, his, his mini supermarket. At night, overnight, the thing is broken in two. Everything is swept off. And he does not only just struggle to come back, he's completely bankrupt. Mm. And look at the figures we're talking about. If they were to know the figures, those figures are extremely manageable. Mm -hmm. Mm. Actually negligible in their day-to-day -day operation. These exactly. are the kind of money they are giving away every day in funerals, in the... Now campaigns have come. They're throwing <laughs> it every day. They are giving it away. I agree. Mm. Mm. So in terms of trying to get the message right, we need this poor educated mm. on the need to appreciate that insurance is affordable. And then the other thing is when you talk about transferring risks, yes, you have this, this shop of yours. You've done all you, you can, burglar proofing, making sure that the lights are there. But still you go back knowing that but mm. the thief, I mean the people, it was human beings who put the lights there. Mm -hmm. It was a human being who put the burglar proofing there. And the thieves are human beings. They are likely to come and get another way mm. of trying to go past your barriers. Now, when you transfer that concern to a third party, you now know that you've done all you can mm, within possible. your means. Mm. But should anything extra happen, there's somebody back. saying, you know what? Mm. For the 50,000 you have been paying per month, we expect we could give you 30 million. Mm. The 50 times 12 is 600. The cover is to the tune of 20 to 30 million. Mm. Brilliant stuff. So we need to, to expand the conversation, the information, yeah. and then that's how we will break into commercialization of agriculture, for example. Short of that, we'll continue t having people talking about capital for business, capital for business. Any fallback in terms of disasters hitting, nil. Mm. Uh, very good. I'll mm. move to you, Rovina. Um, you head, of course, one of the leading schools in the country, that's Gaza High School. And, um, of course, you saw me poking Paul here at the beginning about mm. uh, the perception that people have mm. about insurance not paying, Mm. asking many questions and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, give us your experience. For starters, what motivated you to take that decision of insuring? And how has been your experience being with a policy? Um, high school started insurance in 2004 mm. under the wise guidance of Mrs. Joy Marie, to whom I'm very appreciative and grateful that she thought about this and uh, the school has been insured o for all those years. But um, our experience became very live this year. Mm. Earlier on we had had 
maybe two accidents. At one point, a child had uh, an injury over a glass window. At another point, we had a loss in the swimming pool. But this one, um, on the 6th of March, we had our dormitory gutted with fire mm. and we lost all the property. Luckily, no life was lost. But it was very traumatizing. And as we were into all this confusion, mm. the next day, our insurers were knocking at the door. Okay. They came in to say, to commiserate with us and to find out how best they can be of help. Mm. And immediately, the MD said, can you put in your claim? My, my mind was still welled up with all the other concerns around the fire. But then he said, put in your claim. So we had to get the assessors come on, on board to, to, to verify what, the, to assess the, the nature of the damage and then <coughs> to see how our claim would go. We started the process and they were very cooperative. Okay. Um, eventually, we were compensated. And we, have, we, we had what to start off with in terms of putting back the dormitory. Of course, we were hit by the COVID, the, the, the closure of schools and all. Not much business could go on. Mm. But as soon as uh, operations um, could go on around early May when they allowed vehicles to start moving, we continued with the process of making our claim. Mm. And even when um, the first assessment came through, we expressed dissatisfaction and they listened to us and we were clearly guided mm. until when we got to uh, the, the, the figure that they eventually gave us. And mm. we're so grateful that the school was insured. Mm -hmm. mm. I hear you. Mm. Now, um, from where you sit as a person who runs you know, uh, an important institution. What are what were the key lessons that you were able to draw from, you know, that experience? Because you know, before you get um, uh, a problem, sometimes you may not figure out or, or get a full appreciation of uh, certain realities. But what were the key lessons? One is that you can never know when stress when disaster will strike, mm. and therefore. If you have a fallback position, you are safer. Okay. Secondly, one of the, the other lesson I learned was that at no point should the school be um, uncovered. Mm. The school should be undercover all the time. And not only the school structures, and, but even the vehicles and everything else. Mm. It also, you know, moving away from the school, I also thought about the individual. You, you need to cover yourself as a, an individual. So uh, those are lessons that came through very quickly about insurance that it shouldn't be left for those we think are the well-to-do, those who can manage, yeah. but mm. you can never know when the damage will come to you. You can never know when disaster will strike. And, but if you have a fallback position, mm. the burden is lighter. Yeah. Mm. I hear you. Charles, what do we pick from here, especially for because we've seen many big schools. Yeah. The other day we had the ivory tower it could very going up in flames. I don't want very to comment true. about I don't know whether <laughs> it's insured. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I've already yeah. seen some fundraising drives. Yeah. We don't yeah. know, you know, the yeah. merits of that, but I mean yeah. the details about that. Yeah. Uh, but what do we pick from here? Because schools yeah. are really huge investments. Very true. I think one of the things you can see from here is that one, Gaius is such a very organized school. Yeah. If you see how the buildings are located, it's not congested, not crowded. And when you also look at, because my, my daughter was there okay. from year one up to year six, mm -hmm. when you see the kind of character build that they do, they build people with responsibility. Now, when you look at a school with such order and with such culture and with such discipline, you'd almost say insurance is superfluous. Mm. But Malia, uh, Robina now has said, said, no matter how long it takes, you don't know when. We have no control of those other forces beyond human control. It took 16 years for fire to come. And it 16 eventually 16 years. Mm. Somebody could easily say, Madam Headmistress, 
Last year you paid half a million for insurance. <laughs> nothing <laughs> happened. Yes. For the last this year, so many years, nothing happened. Yes. Madam, uh, please, aren't you wasting our money? Mm -hmm. You are calculating on things you have no idea the magnitude when it strikes. Yeah. Look what she's saying, trauma. Look, the students immediately have no accommodation. Mm. The students had, had, who had their own culture, because I know the culture of students where they say, this is our dormitory. Don't, don't mix us with another dormitory who is below us. Mm. Suddenly, the administrator is saying, the circumstances are such that go and sleep the other side. If not, let's convert a classroom. Now, at that point, the pride, the prestige these students had is totally damaged. Mm. And that has a direct impact on what we are trying to achieve in such a great school. So I think one of the things we need to know is that uh, no matter how long it, hap it takes before it happens, just appreciate that you don't control the button. Mm -hmm. That button will come on any time. And when it does, you will see that it, it can be really devastating. Mm -hmm. We've seen the kind of floods that have disrupted the big states in the US. Yeah. And to what extent huge budgets have had to be diverted into that kind of a game. Mm -hmm. So really, I think one of the things is that don't use the longevity of your peace, absence of a risk to write off the relevance of <laughs> insurance. <laughs> and I think that's an important one. Yes. But I'll get back to Robin uh, at certain yes. point. But the other thing also is, mm. look at the response from the insurer mm. at the level of managing director. Something has struck, and he knows he has got a direct impact on his balance sheet. He says, this is the time for me to prove that I mean what I meant. Yeah. When I was putting my signature to that uh, policy, I meant what I meant. I'm running there and putting aside everything else, one, to go and commiserate with eh, the school. Mm. Two, to go and tell them that, you know what, this is a cloud we had never expected. It has come. We are ready to walk with you through it submit the claim I hear you. at the level of managing director mm -hmm. i think that's what we want to start seeing and then getting you gonna know because that was behind the scenes we didn't know yeah we only looked at the the burning now how the school has restored the domain we don't know mm -hmm. and people take again insurance for granted that's right now when robina comes and puts that picture across suddenly we begin to see insurers have got a uh, blood in them. Yeah. <laughs> These are people with <laughs> a desire to, <laughs> to actually help yeah. us. Yeah. Mm. So these are real human beings and they connect and they can really be your first shoulder to lean on. Mm -hmm. I, I must really say that behavior, mm. if Ugandans had known it, they would just say, is it happening in Uganda? Mm. You have a cost to go and incur and you are running there. Yeah. Instead of saying, I hope they don't remember us mm. and they could take time to, mm. to come to us. The next day, they are at the gate of Gaia's High School. Brilliant stuff. You must mm. be doing something, Paul. To, you mm. know, because, I mean, uh, I'm not a believer in things happening accidentally. Mm. Mm. So I'm imagining that the association is doing something. Because I know, like you said at the beginning, you actually bring together how many players? Over 20 30, players. 36. Over 30. Mm. Exactly. Mm. So um, as an association, um, what is your role in ensuring that actually uh, the players give the business support, I'll mm. call it that, yeah. that they are supposed to give to the different entities? Um, first of all, I must commend Robina for, for a very telling testimony. Yeah. And mm. Um, mm. to be honest with you, when, when the fire occurred at Gayaza, yeah. it was an industry concern. Mm. Not that we were going to start pointing fingers at any player or anything yep. like that, but we were like, how can we use this as a showcase, mm. you know, to, to, to come out and, you know, show our continued relevancy. Yeah. And, and before we knew it, even the underwriter on the risk yes. had already taken the initiative that mm. uh, Robina has mentioned yeah. and was already in sync with mm. the process to start on the claim process, mm. which is what it should be. Mm. Um, to go back to your question, uh, Charles, um, I, I don't want to refer to it as a club because it, it, it's casual, <laughs> but <laughs> this is a club of gentlemen yeah. mm. and ladies who are practicing and making a promise, like Charles has made mm. reference to. Mm. The MD puts a signature on a policy 
and the claim occurs. This is mm. the time for him to come mm. to the table and say, what do I do? Mm. You know, we've come to a point where uh, we even want to settle claims before they happen. You won't believe it. It's <laughs> that proactiveness <laughs> that the members have exhibited. <laughs> we have a very robust regulatory regime. Mm. You know, I if, if, I if we can have market conduct regulation, that compels us to actually disclose mm. to the fullest extent the sort of covers that we're giving, the claims management expectations and things like that, mm. then I think we're doing something right as, mm -hmm. as members. Mm -hmm. and, and I will, sh I will, I will let you know that uh, I even, it's, it, it, it's not a requirement by law, but it is a conventional practice that we have actually instituted ourselves, that even when you're applying for your license renewal, mm. the, the, the regulator will do a health check mm. on your financial, fina financial statements and all that, which is quite critical the most critical element because we are offering uh, we, we're committing capital to settle risks in future mm -hmm. but also on your servicing you know your product development how are you responding to clients do you have any complaints in the claimant in the complaints bureau mm -hmm. you know things like that yeah. so I, I, it has naturally not put us on our toes but it has actually compelled us to excel mm -hmm. and try and make sure that what we're doing is the right thing just to bring it home a little bit um, when we have testimonials such as this it, it then drives the message home. People get to relate. It's very true. I, I can imagine very true. I can imagine if I was a school owner, yeah. I would want to emulate a school of the profile of Gayaza. Mm. Very true. Uh, and I will inject my capital to try and breed the right caliber of students, yeah. attract yeah. the right teachers, yeah. right culture, etc. But it doesn't stop at that. Yeah. I will have to copycat what Gayaza is doing. If, if they are going to... I'm not one of guys on payroll, I'm sorry. But I'm just, you know, because <laughs> uh, um, I could be marketing for them. But if, if they've gone the extra mile to have a risk mitigation in place, mm. then it, that's something that, you know, anybody might have to pick up. That's right. yeah. Again, yeah. to bring it home a little bit, yeah. uh, Charles mentioned the businesses in town. Yeah. We've had storms and rainstorms and floods, mm. you mm. know, for the last couple of, for the entire yeah. month yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of October and, and, and part of September. Mm. But those are mm. risks that we cover. You see? You know, we've seen the videos on social media yeah. of yes. stock being damaged by rainwater. And no conversation yes. went we the direction yes. of insurance. We, 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 we are subscribers mm. to Casita. Mm. We're on the platform. We're preaching the message. Yeah. Mm. So mm. it is now, it, it, it's the time when we are seeing a bit of response. Very good. When quest the right questions are being answered, and good enough, we have the right answers. Mm. So it is not only the landlord who has to insure his property, Mm. Because probably he has a facility in the bank. Mm. He's being cautious mm. about a fire. Because if you have a multitude of tenants, you never know who's going to be careless. That's right. And light, you know, a leave a candle burning. Mm. It's going to, you know, create a catastrophe to the building. Mm. So not only do they do it as landlords for, for their own protection, yeah. but even us as the tenants, for our own business units, mm. let's ensure our stock against mm. such, you know, calamities. I so and in fact, uh, picking from what Paul is just saying, do you know if I'm a, a parent, of course, my, my daughter had already left Gaius High School uh, by the time this calamity happened. If you're a parent and you go to the school, because that day, the next day, you didn't have to wait to say whether your, your daughter was in that dormitory or another dormitory. You just have to say, there was fire yesterday mm. at Gaiaza. Mm. Rush. Rush. Yeah. Yeah. Now you reach there and you find this kind of effort which he says this is the extent this is what happened good enough no life has been lost but then the headmistress is also able to say it's an insured property many of the visas in there say oh my god mm. you mean this is cool can go to the extent of even putting insurance mm. image respect mm. immediately comes in and just say these people are organized That's so right. i want the entrepreneurs to just know that as you put in that extra picture and the word insurance to your own operations you raise your own profile mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing and when you state yeah. that charles mm -hmm. i i keep imagining how many parents and i'm talking about now the mm. educated parents the elites as yes. they call themselves yes actually do ask that question yes. when they are dropping their kids exactly to a particular school where they have exactly. an insurance cover exactly even after because we've been having school fires yeah you yeah. know, for quite some time now. There was even a spike, I think, at a certain point, about yeah. three, four years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it came and life is moving on. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and 
Actually, some of them could be your members, Paul. No, we have the statistics here. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you can touch on them a bit. Exactly. So I think it's a challenge, but yeah. it also an eye-opener to actually yeah. ask the right questions, yeah. but also for the entrepreneurs to actually make the right decisions. Yeah. And on this point, I would like to come back to you, Robina. On um, because you see, as um, a principal or, or <coughs> a head of an institution, you have to convince you know, other stakeholders to see your point. Because this is a cash outflow, mm. paying for that, for that premium, for that um, policy. Mm. Yeah. There's a, there's, I mean, the premium that you pay. That's true. Mm. How did you manage to convince? Because I'm sure there's someone mm. watching mm. and is in your foot, yes. uh, rather sitting in your space, your footsteps, and is wondering how do I start to convince the school uh, owner, owner the, or the board parents, of governors, if it is PTA, board of governors, yes. to actually see my point. It may not come cheap for such an institution, mm. but it's very, very relevant. And there's this word they say, no priority. Yeah. The priority should be this. <laughs> <laughs> now we, our laboratories exactly. should be properly equipped. Exactly, you know? exactly. exactly. Mm. Thank you, Charles. Um, I'm glad I'm seated between two Segogas, you know, okay. for Gayaza, <laughs> yeah. the old girls are Goga. Okay. <laughs> then if you have had a child there, if you have married from there, <laughs> if your mother <laughs> went through Gayaza, <laughs> your, or your sister, you are a Segoga now. That's These a good, that's two a good seem one. to be very good Segogas. But <laughs> coming back to your question, yeah. um, usually catastrophe informs us. Mm. There's a time, must have been 2002, 2003, um, luckily, it was holiday time. Mm. Two rooftops of the dormitories just flew off in a storm. Oh. Mm. I think that must have been what informed Mrs. Murray mm. to go for insurance. Mm. Luckily, the girls were at home. Otherwise, I, that storm was mm. bad. I hear you. But if the rooftop could just fly off. Now, I'm sure that's when she brought the idea of insurance on board. And mm. ever since that time, it has figured in our budget and no one has asked questions, mm. luckily. But now, mm. Mm. I am in a better position to even say, let us have our structures revalued so that mm. our premium is better, so that when we have another incident, yes. not that I'm praying for one, mm. I wouldn't yeah. wish for any other to happen, mm -hmm. we are at a good footing. So you. that one is already in, us, in our budget. But I just want to encourage the others out there who have never considered you may not have to wait for catastrophe to come Very to good. you, but give consideration. Mm. However minimal, you, you, you might never know how that which mm. you're putting in will mm. save you mm. at the opportune moment. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Paul, that, yeah. sorry, mm. please. Mm. Uh, and, and to probably complement her discussion, mm. um, to, to bring it into perspective, then, um, it's more often that insurance is not given priority. Yeah. because risk is not considered as paramount. Yeah. But when, when, when budget informs and you get a proper well-structured insurance program, mm. you will be amazed at the budget mm. that you're actually going to spend. Mm. Um, I, I'm going to get into terrible, I, I mean, I'm going to get into a difficult discussion about Makerere. Okay. But I think it's important for us to be... It is, because yeah. the public is listening, exactly. and I'm sure they want case, to it's see... It's a, it's a matter of public interest. It's a yeah. public, yeah. 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 One of my colleagues, Mr. Paul Muhammad, he's a seasoned underwriter. He's now a practicing broker with Ballpark. Uh, wrote an article on social media. Mm. You know, just to bring it into perspective, mm. the reinstatement value of Makerere is plus or minus 15 billion. If Makerere had insured a month before or the day before, they would have paid 18 million shillings. One so eight. A, 18 million shillings. Mm. So what is 18 million shillings to the value of oh 15 God. billion? You know, when you're going to your alumni, you mm. are looking at the alumni to come and motivate students yeah. mm. to come and pep talk them, mm. talk about professionalism, career mm. development, etc. Mm. Not to get money out of them. You know, so, <coughs> and, and Makerere is the fountain of education, mm -hmm. uh, educational transfer, ETC. Mm -hmm. So, I, it's, it's only proper that they had to create a budget for insurance. I hear you. You know, I hear yeah. You. In fact, on that note, it raises another very important issue, which I'm sure you've been um, contending with as players in the industry, mm -hmm. penetration mm -hmm. of insurance. Yes. How do we, and probably you can 
look at this, also sharing with us the initiatives you have, mm. you know, to grow the appreciation of mm. insurance. Because, I mean, if you're discussing Makere in this equation, mm. I mean, it tells you that um, there's work to be done. Even at that level exactly. of the exactly. university. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we appreciate the fact, because I was looking at the numbers, I think uh, if you look at the penetration of insurance, is less than 1% yes. GDP. Yeah. And uh, that really, really speaks volumes, volumes. to the Achillean task you have. Mm. Um, share with us the initiatives you have as an association mm. to actually bring Ugandans on board. Yeah. <coughs> okay, well, thank you, Charles, and that's another very good question. Um, it's actually embarrassing when we look at the figures because yeah. uh, Kenya alone is posting about 3%, mm -hmm. but lately going down because I think because of the COVID, yeah. the last uh, reports that were submitted end of June. Yeah. The rest of us in the East Africa community are below 1%, yeah. which is a very dismal figure. Mm -hmm. But we, we have to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you can move ahead of times, mm -hmm. but then you have to go back to the basics and say, let me refine what, what the ethos of the foundation of insurance were. Mm -hmm. To have Robina here is one of one such, you know, event. So for her to mm -hmm. give a testimonial mm -hmm. and how insurance mm -hmm. works mm -hmm. is one thing. Um, the statistics we have in the last seven years, you know, I'm, I'm just doing a perspective. In the last 10 years, we've had close to 177 school fires. Wow. How many? 177 school fires. Mm. Wow. According to the police report mm. and, and uh, press releases that we have seen. So that already informs mm. a lack of, mm. you know, either we've not done our bit as insurers or we have tried, but mm. we've not... Uh, gotten the response that is desired. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to look at the Gaza case in perspective, uh, before I go into what, what, we, what we want to do mm -hmm. to generate the penetration that we want, um, there, could be, there are layers of cover. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine if it was really catastrophic that Gaza had to get extra space for the students outside what it already has. Mm -hmm. There's what we call consequential loss. So, mm -hmm. you know, rental expenses for extra space mm. then if it is a business a manufacturing and your downturn on business then you have lots of profits yeah. you know all those insurances are there you know I even at whatever level even at sme level they are there so we we just want to articulate it in a better message using statistical data using premium simulations using practical examples mm. because we realize that when you teach this is insurance this is what we cover I it's another rhetoric workshop or seminar yeah. so yeah. it doesn't help yeah you know yeah. so we're yeah. trying to reinvent the wheel to say yeah yes as we go back to the basics let's crunch it down and you know show the public what the tangible benefit is for mm. insurance now on the on, on the penetration yes it's dismal and for, for me if you peg it to the gdp you're being unfair to us because that shows that we've not done anything mm. And, and I have my <laughs> own theory <laughs> as a poll. I, I, I want to do a policy count. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if I sold one million motor policies last year yeah. and I've sold two million this year, mm. I've penetrated the market. <laughs> that, that, that's, that, that's what I want to see. Yeah. The index of yes. tagging it to GDP is unfair. I it guess. doesn't reflect the sort of effort we've put in. Mm. Um, so what we're doing is um, we, we, we're enlightening the public in terms of uh, using uh, platforms like Enterprise Uganda, yeah. Casita, UI, U Uganda Investment Authority, UMI, and of course agriculture. Agriculture yeah. is one of our biggest stakes now where we are trying to see that we actually penetrate the market mm. and uh, see that people get to appreciate. Mm. If I left the stage without talking about life insurance and medical, I would have not done justice to my colleagues. And I must commend you. They've done well in their life. Yes. So I would, they have I really would, done. That, yes. That's why I'm probably yeah. leaving the best for last. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I, and I guess my, my, my bosses in the, life, in the life companies will be proud of what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Life has actually propelled the, the awareness of insurance lately. Mm -hmm. It is the fastest growing. Yes, in terms of numbers and contribution to the overall gross return premium, mm -hmm. it's still lower than general. Because if you get one big corporate, you'll get a billion shillings. I mean, I, I can <coughs> quote the government parastatals, mm -hmm. like um, uh, National Water, you are a Bank of Uganda. Those are big ticket premiums. Mm -hmm. you know. But the life individual policies, those are the ones that actually, in the right sense, demonstrate what penetration, 
that, that, that for me would be the right sense yeah. of mm. demonstrating our penetration mm. in the market. Mm. Uh, mm. And life has done tremendously well. Mm. Medical insurance has also done tremendously well. Mm. We've gotten to a situation whereby even when you're taking on an employer, I, I mean an employee, before they even talk about the salary, they say, do you have medical insurance mm. for me and my family? Mm. So we are trying to create a lifestyle here. Yeah. Mm. Uh, wh mm. when, when I talk mm. about my friends, the bankers, Mm -hmm. um, it was so prestigious about 20 years ago to have the stand chart card in your wallet, the debit card, because mm -hmm. I think they were the first ones in town. Mm -hmm. And it was a lifestyle thing. Yes. <laughs> what we are aiming for as insurers <laughs> now is not only the share of the wallet <laughs> in terms of the money, but also <laughs> the space in the wallet to have that medical card. Yes. Mm. yes. You know, so it is now a prominent feature in thank anybody's wallet. wallet. Thank you, Paul. It's yeah. indeed a lifestyle. And uh, yeah. I think even for <coughs> businesses, beyond just um, mm. you know the individual covers and that kind of thing, mm. for businesses, I think it should be a lifestyle mm. to have your business covered. Mm. On that note, we're going to take a very short commercial break. When we come back, mm. after from that very short commercial break, we're still looking at practical business skills, but today we're giving it a tweak of insurance. We're looking at how insurance can help you build a sustainable business. And practical is the word we're underlining here. That's why in the studios today we have Robina from Gayaza High School. She's the headmistress of Gayaza High School. And we have Paul Kavuma from Ugandan Insurance Association here to really, really put that statement we put out there for you in two contexts. But before we went for the break, I wanted to bring you in, Charles, mm -hmm. to really distill from... Um, you know, some of the key learnings from, mm. from, from Paul's submission yeah. before we start to pick, uh, you know, the input from some of our viewers. Mm. Viewers, mm. reach us on the WhatsApp number, <coughs> which is running on your screen. Um, you can drop a quick line and we'll pick your question. But then also towards the end of the show, we'll pick some calls uh, for our guests here to respond. What is coming out of this conversation is that one, insurance is not expensive. It can be afforded almost by anybody. Yeah. Or you could say the option is more expensive. I think so. Yes. That, that's <laughs> the real message. <laughs> insurance is extremely affordable. Mm -hmm. We need more information people to get that message right. Yeah. Number two, the insurers have a professional standing which is guided by industry practice. Yeah plus their own calling as professionals in the sector, which again helps because mm. for an insurer, when they are doing their, um, I, I suspect when they are doing their annual work plans and budgets, they are also saying, you never know this year, we might uh, get some calamities manifesting, mm. and they look at some figures coming through there. So they are also saying, no matter what, when it happens, run, yeah. go and do it. Then the other thing that comes out is that um, it would look to me, but I think Paul needs to confirm this, it would appear that if we got more people into the insurance um, sector mm -hmm. and become policyholders, even the cost could go down generally. Yeah. Because then the kind of premiums that are coming through from a bigger pool will be the one to respond to those risks that will manifest across 12 months. Mm. So the more we are in that thing, the better for this economy. And to me, again, that would give Uganda a certain perspective. And it pulls us from this kind of native survival, where you're saying, well, whatever happens is now God. I, I <laughs> surrender it to God. <laughs> native. <laughs> God is telling you that, please, take charge of your life. I want to bless the works of your hands. Mm. Do not surrender everything to that extent to the creator. Mm. And then uh, the other thing that was interesting from Robina's perspective, and I hope I got it right, Robina said it has motivated them even now to work on their properties much better mm. so that the premium is also... Uh, more attractive. Mm. It would appear also depending on how you have managed what you have and you want to be insured, the premium can become even cheaper mm. depending on how organized you are. Mm. So you can see there is general rating but then it can even get better when you are more organized owner of the insured item. 
which of course takes to even life if you're more reckless uh, mm. uh, person and you want uh, the, the people to ensure you mm. and every other day you are involved in some very risky lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect. I'll ask Paul here whether they have uh, a policy for <laughs> sport riders. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. um, I think those are very, very nice pointers. But coming yeah. back to you, Robina, mm. a school has so many competing priorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the costs are also many, I would like to imagine. True. Um, how do you manage to sit, you know, this problem, which is not of today, <coughs> within your so many priorities that of are today, demanding? Which are actually in your face there. Exactly. Then. Because mm. we see it in many businesses. I mean, someone wants to deal with the problem of today, not tomorrow. So, how do you deal with that, you know, for purpose of our viewers to draw from? your experience? Um, you have to be in agreement with the board. Mm. If you sell your idea rightly to the board, because you're the ones on ground, you're the ones in operations, mm. whatever idea you sell to them, they, they advise mm. and buy into whatever you have uh, proposed to them, and they help you to ensure that what you have sold to them can be implemented. Mm. Um, the idea of insurance for schools, probably, I don't know um, how many schools that have experienced the fires, he has mentioned 177, yeah. I don't know how many of those were insured. I hear but if they find, if there's an example of one that has insurance cover, mm. it could attract others mm. to come on board. So, we may not ha know how to solve a problem which has not occurred, but when it occurs to you, th you have to look for means exactly. of mitigating mm. Mm. what has happened to you. I hear you. Mm. Paul, I have um, someone here who has dropped in a very quick WhatsApp mm. and is wondering. He wants to know, um, he wants you to break down the existing insurance packages for small businesses and also agricultural insurance packages. Mm. Okay, um, off the top uh, of my head, um, for quick business, you know, packages, mm. retail, 100 million, you can have one against theft, you can have one against fire. Mm. Those are the key ones. If you're into supplies and delivery, you can have your movement of goods as well covered. Yep. If, you, if you deal with a lot of cash, uh, you can have what we call a cash in transit mm. and also a fidelity guarantee, which means that you are protecting yourself yep. against losses that are occasioned by either yourself mm. <laughs> to your business or your staff <laughs> because now it is the company not you you're yeah. disassociated from the company mm. so basically those are the immediate risks mm. that we usually see okay. in these sort of uh, scenarios mm -hmm. yeah then for agriculture we have weather okay. uh, and uh, lack of germination um, even lack of germination uh, yes <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> you know agriculture is a bit it's it's meticulous in underwriting in that it is seasoned We've now ended underwriting any risks for agriculture because it's supposed to be an end of September. Mm. So if you got a risk now, certainly it won't be covered mm. because it's it's season governed. Mm. But but we also th there's there's a metrics they use, you know, to to try and determine the loss. In the event of a loss, you look at the yield expectation. Mm. If if um, you're expecting one one um, a ton of maize mm. from an acre of uh, land, then it will be worked out and then um, your claim will be paid. Mm -hmm. But pesticides as well. Um, I, I, want to I don't want to go into uncharted waters like locusts, mm -hmm. but <laughs> we have learned as insurers <laughs> not to be bashful about mm -hmm. risks. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we afford cover for locusts, but to one extent. Depends on the threshold of mm -hmm. the farm premium paid ETC, but not for some small scale. So the unfortunate bit is that it's not yet been tested. Mm -hmm. Because the region where the locusts were, um, the we didn't have covers, I but at least it does exist. We also have cover for livestock, uh, any, any sort of livestock that you would um, imagine, B and, and drought, majorly drought. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Then I have James here is wondering um, about your plans for your carry, especially mm. when it comes to mandatory insurance policies, because mm. he's saying a tax conductor, a tax owner will actually put third party insurance mm. Mm. on his vehicle not yes. to be covered, but yes. actually not to be stopped yes. by the traffic officer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How are you helping these guys appreciate the importance and role? Actually, uh, we are rolling out, we've already rolled out mm. uh, motor third party claims um, 
pursuit and settlement. Mm. You know, A, for the public to appreciate. Uh, that is a very good question, and, and that shows that actually he does appreciate that insurance works, mm. but he doesn't know how to trigger mm. the mm. cover. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, workers' compensation is a so social protection policy yeah. because the government takes charge of its citizens. Mm. So imagine any casualty of an accident would be dumped into Murago, mm. and that would be the cost of the government. Mm. But if you have motor third party insurance, then it comes to mitigate that. You know, government, government would be mitigated to one extent mm. by us, the policy issuers, to settle those claims. Mm. So what we are doing now is to actually educate the masses in that don't treat this as a tax because that's originally what it was. Before yeah. your road license was <coughs> renewed, yeah. you must have had motor third party. Mm. But we're now showing you the impact of not having mm. and the impact of having a forged one. Mm. And, and when it responds and how it can respond. Mm. The insurers have also been guided by the regulator to be a little flexible. Mm. In the event of an accident where somebody's leg has been maimed, I mm. mean, it's 100% incapacity, the leg has gone. Mm. In the event that somebody has lost his life, mm. honestly, mm. The we, we are relaxing on a bit of the requirements, okay. like police reports, uh, letters of admin. If it's a straightforward case, we are yeah, we're looking at it on, on its merit, and then try to dispense the settlement as quick as possible. Very because good. that was a very frustrating mm. sort of process. There are and many and coming we for are you, not Paul, yeah. We are not bashful about it. There are still more questions coming for yes. you. Yes. And I think you're doing a good job in lighting. Uh. Uh, Dixon is wondering. He wants to uh, go into import and export trade. Yes. So he's wondering how to get transportation insurance, if that's what you call it, uh. and where can he get it? Okay. Um, that's a very good question. And we are at the moment... Uh, implementing a project called marine insur marine cargo insurance mm -hmm. for imports um, okay depending on whether he's importing mm -hmm. okay I'll first explain the importation where it is a requirement by law yeah. that all imports must be insured in Uganda yeah. locally mm -hmm. because we've had a premium flight that is revenue to the government going out why why do we have to insure in China when we have insurers here you know but we don't want to use the law to compel people we want to actually implore people mm. by telling them the advantages. Mm. If you insured in China for your goods coming from China to Uganda, yes. in the event of a claim at Mombasa, the process of going to Guangzhou to look for in Nihau insurance company, mm. you know, translation of the policy, language barriers, it's a challenge. Mm. But you can easily go to 28 Kampala Road, 38 Kimathi Avenue, Nakasero Road, look at your insurer, you mm. talk about it, then your claim is settled. Yeah. But for inland transits, we have what we call the goods in transit. Mm. If he went to the UIA website, there are 21 underwriters who offer that risk. Click on any of them, your choice, use a broker, use an agent, they will advise you. Okay. Yes, on the appropriate cover. Thank you, Paul. Uh, at this moment, I'll be opening the calls uh, for some of the callers that want to come through uh, on the lines. But as uh, the callers come in, Charles, mm. what are we picking here for mm. our small operators yeah i think one of them is that um, do not make too many assumptions about insurance talk to the experts mm. then you'll begin to see the kind of things they can give you the other thing also is that uh, when you you are talking of insurance as you can you you've just heard from paul they are brokers they are agents mm. they you don't need necessarily to come from Gulu to NIC head office here. Mm. There will be somebody somewhere, even if they don't have a branch that end, who will be able to guide you. Mm. So again, um, we need to appreciate that when you're talking of insurance, they have got also channels. Yes. So many friendly channels, almost like the way you have uh, friendly outlets for your Airtel, your MTN, or your mobile phone, or uh, company services. Mm. They also Sorry, have the I'll have mm. to cut you a bit short. Mm. I have some callers on the line. Okay. Um, dear callers, um, once mm -hmm. you get through, please just give us your quick name and question. Hello? Hello? Okay, I think we, ha we seem to have a bit of a problem with that, with that call. They will speak another. Mm. Hello? Okay, I think we've lost that one as well. Mm. Yes. You yeah, I was also talking about the, um, the experience people are having about to processing the claims. Mm. Uh, you can see there is now a response from 
the industry saying that if indeed death Hello? has occurred mm. sorry yeah. yes yeah. please give us your name Hello? and Hello, you're live on NTV. Yes, my name is Margaret. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Margaret. Yes, Margaret, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I work with MU Insurance Company. Okay. And I'm a sales agent. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Poe and the team, for the presentation. You've talked about schools. Uh, Madam Robina, thank you so much for coming out to, uh, to testify. I have reached out to very many schools, uh, big schools, selling to them insurance, and it's really been a big challenge. Is it possible for, 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 for the team uh, to see how the Ministry of Education and Sports to come out and uh, pass it as a compulsory uh, policy in all schools to see that they get that cover? I've seen it on newspapers. Uh, on the news, whereby uh, a lightning comes, thunder rains, a storm, and rooftops are, are blown off. Most of the pupils have been have been injured, mostly in those schools in the villages. And parents are a problem or a trouble to cater for their uh, pupils. Mm. And the schools have also faced a very big challenge to see that uh, they, they rebuild their schools. Is it possible, Mr. Kavuma, uh, for the government to come out and pay, as you see there is a subsidy in agriculture, to pay a, a certain percentage on the premiums for the schools, to see that those schools that cannot afford the 100% premiums, they can also take on a cover? Thank uh, you. Another thing, is it possible, Madam Robina, to come out, you as a head teacher in one of the prominent schools in Uganda, if we have... Uh, maybe sensitization in uh, those other schools that you come out and you help us preach the gospel, that gospel, <laughs> into uh, those other schools so that they also come on board. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kapima, you, talk, you talked of uh, lack of germination. Uh, really, I didn't know that we really had that cover of lack of germination because I have seen a farmer who eats her seed. A woman ate her seed and said, since I've taken on an agriculture cover, oh so people come Proud. out and pay me. <laughs> but because we always have a rapport between we, the insurers, and our clients, the woman had to tell me the truth, that you know what, my husband, it was ABCD, but because my husband knew that we had taken on a cover, that we oh ate that God. seed. <laughs> How possible is that? How um, can we uh, clear that out? Thank you very because much. Because now it comes back to we, the agents who go out there, treat the cost of agriculture insurance. So, Mr. Kavuma, I'd like to uh, to have that too. Uh, Sorry, we have to get to you all because we have many others on the line that want to make uh, some comments. Very interesting point, uh, Paul, uh, but probably we'll tackle it. Um, dear callers, when you come through, please just be as brief as possible. Um, we'll now take a, another caller. Uh, you give us your name and go straight to the point you want to make. Okay, for now, we will uh, bring back the discussion to what those issues, uh, mm -hmm. for, to those issues that have been raised. Yeah, quickly, um, about, about government mm -hmm. and subsidizing, you know, school ownership is business, and government will only concentrate where they know mm -hmm. the masses benefit. Yes. Certainly the government is going to subsidize business for, for businessmen. Mm -hmm. the, the same principle would hold in agriculture because they're looking to the peasant and the guy to improve on his agriculture. Yeah. So our lobbying effect uh, as the UIA, yes, is there. But certain things need law, mm -hmm. you know, to take effect. Yeah. Uh, but, but certainly we are lobbying. We are trying to show the prominence of insurance. <coughs> now, my, my colleague in the sector, the agent was just called, has, has actually brought out something that I was, you know, bashful in terms of bringing to the fore. Mm. But fraud is very eminent in insurance. Mm. Actually, we are hard his, hardest hit now. Mm. If you looked at the KPMG report, the latest report, because KPMG is very, very interested in insurance, mm. and they carry out a fraud survey, uh, an annual one. The last one we checked, we were losing a lot of money. You know, 20% of the premium or something like that, wow. which is quite a lot. That's huge. Yeah, so if... Lack of germination is then treated as using the seeds for, for a meal. <laughs> then that is <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and at times, that is when 
claims are frustrated yes because we're going to ask these questions yes just to take it home a little bit and quickly round up the fraud thing mm. i've always asked my colleagues and we've seen it mm. what happens every three months every three months we are paying school fees that's right every three months is when you see cars vandalized wind screens loss of laptops etc i'm not saying parents are you know but it happens mm -hmm. and we wonder why it happens mm. You know, so we, we, we have to be mindful about this as well. It's a okay. huge vice. Yeah. Very good. Mm. Again, I have someone from Oyam here, or, or maybe before I bring them in. Robina, um, <laughs> they Margaret. want to be appointed, want yes. someone to appoint you. Someone wants to appoint <laughs> you ambassador <laughs> of, uh, of UIA. Mm. Th mm. Thank you very much, Margaret, for that consideration. This is the first sensitization I could talk about. I am mm. here and I am appealing to all the other heads of institutions. Mm. Please log on to insurance. We mm. can never know mm. when disaster will strike in your school. Very true. Just there's a policy issue again that Margaret is bringing to the fore. Mm -hmm. The issue yes. of subsidizing. Yes. You know, for certain, yeah. I would like to expand it beyond education. Yeah. Certain sectors. Yeah. And I think agriculture is already doing it. Mm. Yeah. I think the case of agriculture is extremely a compelling case for insurance to start coming in there. Yeah. Uh, now, when you bring in schools, you want to bring in clinics, you want to bring in whatever. If you keep taking that route, I think the first route to first exhaust is education. Mm -hmm. The very things we are beginning to share here now are beginning to show that this facility can be a facility for an ordinary person, mm -hmm. but more education and more education. And then meeting and hearing the behind the scenes kind of experience of uh, entities like Gaius High School, where you see that actually that incident later was quickly restored with insurance participation. But what she also brings in is what we teach in business. Mm. For insurance to work and for insurance to have speed and for people to benefit from it the way Gaius High, Gaius High School has its own principles, as I mentioned earlier on. By the time they tell you that this is the dormitory, it had the suitcases inside, it had mattresses inside there, it had beds. You don't see anybody trying to say, let's first, remove, let's first remove the beds and the mattress, then burn it. You know, fraudulent behavior. Yeah. The aspect of trust makes the economy move faster, mm. makes everything cheaper, makes relationships smoother. Mm -hmm. The moment we bring in this element of saying, oh, you pay that small amount of money and they have guaranteed you a certain yield. Ah, let's now show them that the yield has not worked out. But you harvested the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You actually harvested the crop. Because the insurer is not on your garden mm -hmm. to be saying where are the bugs. Yes. Mm -hmm. You harvested the crop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You took it to the market. You got the money. Then you turn around and say, no, I had expected to get 10 tons here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell them that we got two. <laughs> no, that's a good one. It, mm. It's bad. Yeah. Trust in an African setting, we are really deficient in that key element. Mm. And I want Uganda to know that trust creates speed. Trust is cheaper. Trust builds relationships. If we can get this right, there are a lot more things that can make this continent to move, move faster. Very good. Mm -hmm. Paul, I have someone from uh, Oyam. Mm -hmm. He's very much interested. He's saying, I'm happy to hear about the insurance. Please, I would like to have his contact, your contact. Mm -hmm. And do they have an agency in Oyam? And I think this question speaks mm -hmm. directly to access. Mm -hmm. to the channels. To the yeah. Mm. On the at the grassroots. Uh, mm. Maybe just, just a quick response. You All can right. go to our website, okay. Uganda Insurance Association. And uh, certainly he will get a wealth of information there. And it yeah. is, uh, what's the address? What um, UIA, www.uia.co. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then he can pick up the conversation because we, have, we also have a, uh, a helpline. Mm. Yeah. I have Yusuf mm -hmm. still asking about the motor vehicle insurance. Mm. Looks like I, I see mm. quite a number of questions Mo here. Mm. Mm. He's, he's wondering, when do we benefit from motor vehicle insurance? Mm. Like what you put on cars? Please help. Yeah. Mm. Now, MTP, motor third party as we know it, mm. is, mm. Uh, is a cover that is going to assist you in the event of an accident. Mm. You see, like we all know, mm. it's, it's always unforeseen. You don't wake up in the morning to cause an accident. No. But when it does happen, 
then you have that um, mitigation. What we are trying to do, because, because of the payout being as dismal as a million shillings, it is not yet very attractive. Mm. You know, the police report alone is, is going to cost you 80,000. Mm. Then uh, good surgery is going to be over and above a million. Mm. What we are doing now as part of our lobby, of yeah. course, with the stewardship of our regulator, mm. we are trying to see that we see an improvement on the Motor Third Party Act mm. in mm. terms of its coverage and most importantly, the benefit offering. Yeah, yeah. not necessarily blowing up the premium, mm. but once the benefits are there and they are seen, then you attract more, you know, customers and then you leverage on the premium that you already earn. Okay, you know. then I have a tech gig here. The young man is saying he's into mobile phone, rather uh, online application development mm. and e-commerce systems. Yes. So he's wondering, have you developed products to address mm. people that are sitting in that space? Yeah, the, the current motor third party purchase is online. You use your smartphone or your, there's a USSD code, so you can purchase. No, 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 he's saying <coughs> his business mm. is to develop applications, oh, software applications. So, so, so insurance for that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do have it. Okay. Yeah, we have what we call professional indemnity. Right. Uh, in the event that he is putting up something that might not actually serve the need, mm. the, then, then uh, you know, it's, a, it's like erroneous professional advice mm. given to, the, to his, um, to his, uh, to the poor who is selling too. Yeah. So probably that would also cover it. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I love that, Charles. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you've seen some of the young people that we host here, yeah. and some that ask us. Yeah. Because... I mean, in, since COVID-19 happened, we've been telling especially young people yeah. to not to sit home, but innovate. Mm -hmm. Very and true. one of the spaces where we're seeing a number of young people innovating, because they don't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. yeah, but they have that, yeah. the skills. Mm -hmm. Very true. And uh, I think if we talk about giving them that good fallback mm -hmm. and protection, Very true. the fact that Paul here is responding to such realities in the market yeah. is quite... Yeah. Uh, no, it's very, very, very attractive indeed. And uh, I think uh, that's why this kind of a conversation is giving the country interesting aspects and shades to the game of insurance. And I thought I needed Paul, I don't know whether you confirmed it, mm. that the moment we have so many policyholders, the cost will even be lower. Yes. Mm. Uh, is but that, uh, yeah, is that evidence in a way to confirm that? Just a quick response to that. We are currently under a minimum rates regime, okay. whereby Oh. There's a basic, basic okay. premium that has to be achieved. Okay. But we are transcending to risk-based supervision. I hear you. Whereby okay. your capital must, res must respond to the risks that you carry. Okay. So okay. now you do your own. That, that's when the seasoned underwriters are going to come out. I you know, the, mm. the, the, the late Honorable Seban that is it all. You know, that sort of conservative underwriter, underwriting will come out. Mm. Where you leverage the risk against the capital that you have. Rate it properly and then... You know, yeah. yeah. Mm. Right. So, so ultimately, mm. then we shall get back into what we call the no claims discount on motor. Mm. Annually, if you've had a good run and you mm. don't have a claim, then you mm. can afford you a sort of a discount for mm. your next. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's evolving. Yeah. 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 It's, it's it's we've got the right regulatory framework, mm. the right environment. Yeah. Um, we're transitioning to that in 2020 to 2024. That's yeah. And I think what the other thing that I would want, uh, again, Paul, to guide the viewers is on the fact that um, people are trying to spoil the ocean or the waters. Mm. We're here trying to bring this good facility to deepen in the society. Mm. And then some idle fraudsters are seated at the sidelines yes. saying, yes. how do we take advantage of this opportunity? Mm. I remember when Puiko was initially rolling out uh, medical insurance, mm. Mm. the yeah. kind of fraud. Mm. It was too much. That near and end I up. Think those early years, health yes. insurance was yes. a problem. I, and for yeah. the next seven years, we never had enough. And the collusion was everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Be it with the medical centers, <laughs> be it with the drug dispensers. Everywhere, everybody was simply saying, insurance will pay. Mm. <laughs> insurance right. will pay. Mm. And all times, you get a card which the holder is supposed to be one or two. It's given to everybody in the house. Yes. Mm. Now, Definitely. this policy is for one person. Mm. Everybody is carrying that thing, and the doctor is receiving it knowingly mm. that this card is supposed to be for one person, mm. but eight people are benefiting from it. From it. Mm. So I don't know to what extent uh, either the law or the practice or the regulator mm. or the insurance association 
has come up with a way where it becomes a little bit uh, risky to defraud mm. through and the in, in insurance facility. And thank God, anyway, we now yeah. have a number of bodies in yeah. that particular space. But, Paul, you can give us your yeah, insights on your wrapping yeah. remarks mm. with mm. Uh, that in context. Mm. Okay, yeah, just, just to wrap up. Yeah, fraud is very eminent. Mm. We cannot, you know, shy away from it. We have to be, we have to take it head on. Yeah. Um, so when, 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 when questions are asked about a claim, then certainly there's a, there's a tinge about fraud. Mm. So, like you said, Charles, yes, medical can be hit. Mm. And we are trying as much as possible to have robust systems. Yeah. We do mystery shopper surveys, ETC. So, it's something that we're addressing. We also have a frauds desk at the IRA, at the right. regulator's office. Yeah. So, mm. to wrap up, um, we want to break the myth that insurance doesn't pay. Yeah. Otherwise, Very good. Oth otherwise, we would not have a surviving insurance company mm. in the market. Because if you don't pay, then... What are you do? I mean, you wouldn't have the customers. And the growth you know, numbers. Certainly that the growth customer. numbers would, wouldn't. Mm. So, uh, yes, our research is informing survival of business. Mm. These are very unprecedented times. I uh, you know we've had limited response to COVID because of the exclusion mm. in the policies. But at least we've tried our best on, uh, on the medical front, mm. uh, again, as guided by the regulator. And also, we were in partnership with UBA on the restructuring of loans, mm. which I think has also put us in very good stead. Mm with uh, people who have personal loans. I'm happy about the bank assurance. Yeah, moves. so bank assurance as well is another move mm. that has widened our scope of distribution, yeah. mm. which is a good thing. Um, complaints, yes, mm. they will be there. Use the desks, use, use the IRA, use the UIA to make sure that you are spoken for. We want to get more testimonials like from um, Robina here. And, and our, I mean, the hashtag for insurance is that for us really is that insurance works. I hear you. And I, I want to Thank you very much. Robina, uh, your last words? Um, the term COVID is real is not new to us. Mm. I just mm. want to say that disaster can be real. Yeah. Yeah. I mm. want to also mention to any heads of institutions, heads of um, organizations, that you need to provide for risk. The only way to provide for risk is by insuring. Mm. When you insure your your institution you will not go wrong you can never know when that storm will blow off the roof mm. when that fire will gut the classroom or the library or the mm. dormitory so we need to plan for risk mm -hmm. um i could not say a parting shot without thanking enterprise uganda mm. Mm -hmm. thank you enterprise mm -hmm. uganda thank you for allowing gayaza to testify very good. How insurance, well, how we have benefited from insurance. Mm. Thank you very much. Uganda Insur Insurance Association, mm. we are knocking at your door. Please. Please <laughs> <work>. <laughs> Thank you, Robina. <laughs> Charles, please, please allow me to wrap this up yeah. in the interest of time. No problem. Thank yeah. you, viewers. That's all the time we've had for uh, mm. this afternoon. And I'm sure you've picked quite um, good lessons from the experience of Gayaza, from the man himself, from Uganda Insurance Association. I've been your host, Charles Boji. As usual, with Charles Ochichi, our business coach, it's been good having you around. Have a good evening.